The most affordable AI video generator out there just got some brand new updates. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI. And the platform I'm talking about is Vidu, which is today's sponsor. And they have just updated to their version 2.0 model, plus made improvements across the board, and I'm gonna show them to you. I have always been a fan of Vidu. I've been talking about this platform for months and months, and I've always talked about how I really like the creativity of their output. Things just seem more dynamic and fun, and I've just always enjoyed where this platform was going. And now now with these improvements, it really is a true contender. Now, before we get into my examples, just real quick, I wanna to point to a couple of things on the front page. First, I always talk about using the reference material that these platforms provide, so you don't waste a lot of credits trying things that you think might work when they're not optimized for the platform. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go up under your profile here and click on Help Center. This will give you a basic overview to the platform in its current state, but if you'd like to learn more about prompting, which I highly recommend, you're gonna to wanna to click that Vidu Prompt Guidance and go through this document from top to bottom because you're going to learn so much about what makes a good prompt, what makes the difference, so you're not thinking, oh, this platform doesn't work and all you needed to do was tweak your approach. You're gonna find as you go through this document that this platform is ready to do a lot if you know how to ask it to do it. So absolutely take the time to go through the documentation on all these AI video platforms so that you can first learn how to best optimize it and use your credits wisely. Right on the front page, they've got some examples of their updates. Combine these elements and get this video, or you can combine the same faces here and get a more coherent face throughout the course of the video. Now, they were one of the first ones to do this reference video back in the 1.5 update, which we talked about in an earlier video, and now it's just gotten better. I'm gonna show you plenty of examples of that as well. I also invite you to go through this area here, the short film. This is where you can see how people have actually used this beyond just the clips to put together actual films. A lot of these films here were used with the older model, but you can still get some great quality and get some ideas. You're also going to want to go through this explore section and see what people are doing. All of these are labeled with the tech that was used. For example, this is image to video. This was a first and last frame example. Here's an example of reference to video where we've combined a picture of this guy and this shirt and these people and put the prompt a person in a jacket in a room with the guards close-up shot of a person's intense expression, camera pans and stays focused on face. So it combined all of these various elements into one video. That's the essence of the subject reference. I've been working on this platform for quite some time, and this is an example of an image to video with a prompt, colossal, hairy tarantula, I won't read the whole thing, gave it a lot of detail, but the idea was that the tarantula was gonna be walking down this river down in this canyon, and this is the result I got with version one. So contrast that with the results that we got with the new model version two, where we've got a much more interesting scene and much more dynamic action. Here's another example of a version one image to video where we had a man being chased by a creature where we've got a lot of tearing and the weird motion blur that we had at the time. Here's the same prompt with the exact same settings with version two. In terms of the settings, the resolution here was set for speed, which is their fastest rendering model. And their super fast rendering speed is one of the distinguishing features of the Vidu platform and it always has been. Let me just show you an example. We'll just use this simple image here of a guy building a sandcastle on the beach. We're going to use the four second duration. Speed is the resolution. We'll leave that movement amplitude for auto because you can adjust it to small, medium, and large. Amount refers to the number of videos you're going to create in that one pass. And here I'm just going to type man builds an elaborate sand castle on the beach. And this is only four credits, by the way, to run this. And let's watch what happens. So I've hit create. It's going to go into the queue. And within seconds, it's going to start going across there. And you're going to see that we're going to have our finished product here within about 10 seconds of rendering it. So let's play it. And we've got him working on the sandcastle on the beach. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's a short four second video. Any of these videos that we render at this speed resolution, meaning less than 720 or 1080, we can convert to HD if we like. We just click on HD and choose another four credits to spend and we will get that in just a few minutes. At the time of this recording, the VDU 2.0 model doesn't support text to video yet, so we're just gonna be looking at image to video and the subject references and the start and end frame stuff because those are the strong points of the 2.0 model. So let's just go through some of the things I've been playing with here. Now, I mentioned before that one of the things I am most impressed with is the start and end frames. And I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of mixed results with the whole start and end frame concept on these platforms because I get a lot of camera cuts even when I don't think I should. Now, granted, most of these tests, I use images that are fairly similar. This is our starting image here. She's just reading at one angle. And this is our ending image. She's wearing the same clothes at a slightly different angle. And the prompt was simply, camera moves slowly around woman who is talking on her phone. 
phone. Now I want to play this full screen so that you can see the quality. You'll notice this was a 720p render and the details are great and the lightness stays consistent throughout. We do have a sort of a magical leg shift if you're watching very closely, but hey, who's watching closely? Here's the exact same prompt, except that I ran it for eight seconds rather than four, still at the 720p resolution. Similar concept here. We have the starting image here and the ending image here, only slightly different, a little bit different in the head. So you'll see that when we move from the first image to the second image, we have this sprout of feathers here. Here's a great example of the subject reference where we can add this woman along with this boy in this studio. And the prompt is woman is talking to the boy in the purple studio with videos playing on the monitors. And we get this and everything stays pretty much exactly how it was looking in the original images. Here's another with start and end frames with this being the start frame and this being the end frame. Again, consistency between the two images definitely helps to avoid things like camera cuts. But I feel like the model does a pretty good job of handling the subtle differences that happen in the background between the two images without it being too obvious or doing a camera cut. Here's another set of animations demonstrating the differences between some of these settings here. This was a start and stop image with this being the start image and this being the stop image with the prompt being woman walks through a marketplace. The movement amplitude here was medium. On this version, everything the same except that I had the movement amplitude large. And so now instead of just standing there and turning a little bit, she actually does some walking into another scene. No camera cuts. Yes, of course, the belt has to magically appear because the images are different in that way, but the movement itself and the transition is some of the best I've seen. So this one was rendered at 1080p. I'll show you the full version in just a second. Just wanted to point to the settings here. We did a four second clip at small movement amplitude, and here is our output for that. Here, everything was the same, except that we choose medium for the movement amplitude, and we've got a little bit more movement in his hands, although the goats are still sitting quietly. Here, we're using the subject reference to combine actually two different elements. What I've done here is I've got two different pictures of her face so that the model knows different angles of her face and I've added the bunny in the field. Then the prompt is woman is sitting in the field with a bunny, which is exactly what we get. I did use small movement amplitude though, however, and there's not a lot going on. A couple of experiments with these guys. We've got a start image and an end image. There are definitely differences in the background. The prompt is camera slow zooms and on man walking out of the house looking around for his cat. Now we don't see any sign of him looking for a cat. We get something of a morph and a weird sort of zoom in effect here like Jaws, you know? But again, at least we don't have a camera cut and given that these are two different images, it's, I feel like it's doing the best it can. This was at 720p and we used the small movement amplitude. We did an eight second render. We upped the movement amplitude to medium and these are the differences here. Again, we still have to deal with the fact that they're two different outfits and so they have to do a little magic morph a little bit between them. And if you watch the door frame, of course, it's going to change as well because it is different. Here it is with the large movement amplitude. It's not like he's jogging anywhere. Plus I don't have him change positions too much in these videos. So I'm not exactly sure what I expected him to do. I could have said the man's doing jumping jacks, but I didn't. Here's an example of using one of the templates. Now we've seen different services offer things like the ability to hug and kiss and things like that. This particular one is the Christmas gift template. You can access the templates from the front page here by clicking templates. And right now we've got just a few of them, kiss, hug, AI outfit, Christmas hug, Christmas gift, and Christmas toast. I'm gonna to show you examples of a few of these as we go along. Here's the hug templates. So I got two different pictures here, her and me, and then of course they come together and hug cross picture. And here's the Christmas gift template with a donkey receiving a package from Santa. Now I really loved testing the start and end frame, mostly because I was always so frustrated with the results I was getting with virtually every other platform. So I was so thrilled with the things I was getting in here. Here's the starting image. I'm down the hall in some books and in the next one, I'm right up against the camera. Man runs quickly towards the camera with a look of surprise. I'm doing this at 1080p for four seconds with the large amplitude model. So here it is at 1080p. I'm not running, but I am at least moving towards the camera and everything stays mostly coherent. We have some weird jiggling here as we get impossible transitions. Again, note that was a four second clip. So this time I added some length to it, made it eight seconds, took it down to P, kept the movement amplitude at large. So we've got this nice movement. It's a little wacky at this one point where he puts his hands in front of his face, but it is the effect I wanted and there's no camera cuts. Here I'm just standing at the bottom of the stairs and in the next one, I've got a jacket on and I'm thinking, thinking, how are we going to do this? Man has handed his jacket and he puts it on. We don't really get the jacket handed to him. 
He's there and then it suddenly gets slipped on as he turns. Here's another version, medium movement amplitude, 720p, four seconds. This way it looks like it was maybe handed to him, but the putting on process is a little rushed, but of course I only gave it four seconds to do the whole movement. Here I was playing with the subject reference and I had this woman and this crate of oranges and this man, I wanted to combine them in a scene. So I said, woman is giving a crate of oranges to a man at a farmer's market and we get this result. Now the man is not 3D or animated looking like the other guy. So I modified the prompt and said, woman is giving a crate of oranges to a 3D animated man at a farmer's market. And now he looks more like the original character. But then I realized, Bob, you're using the VDU 1.5 model. What are you doing? This is a video about 2.0. Let's see what kind of results we can get with that. So here are the results from that. And the biggest difference is in the quality of the faces of both the woman and the man. They look way more like the original images here. And I'm hoping you can tell the overall improvement in the quality of the image. Here's another version, except for the movement amplitude, I chose large, which I think made it a little bit unrealistic with the way things are being done here. This is another one I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out because I had this starting image where we've got sort of the scarecrow character at the bottom left. We've got the line in the middle and this Tin Man thing on the far right. And then the ending image has them in completely different positions. So I was like, how is this going to move? Well, what we've done is we've added a little character. We do get some tearing here when all of that transition happens. I told it to do small movement amplitude, but I gave it a lot to do in that, and I think that's probably why it is tearing. This is actually one of my favorite start and end frames. I had her on a stairwell indoors, and now she's outside on the street, and I wanted to see how they were going to do that. I said, woman walks downstairs, out the door, and into the street, and that is just what we get. She comes down those stairs, walks through a door, and then is out on the street. Now, this could have very easily been handled with a camera cut, but it did what I asked. Here's a really cool four-second version where she just sort of spins and the outside is changed. It's very magical and what? Not a jump cut. Their virtual try-on template is a little different than some of the others that I've used out there. I actually gave it images that weren't going to work. The clothing was correct. You do just want a flat piece of clothing or a headless mannequin as your clothing source. But for the model, you just want a headshot and not the whole body because this is what we got when I did that and the dress was nowhere to be seen. However, on this one, I just used a crop top image and a headshot and combined them and then got what I was expecting. Another example here, we've got a full image of a dress and one picture of Presley and then we get them combined here with really nice animation. This one was impressive for me because this particular shirt with the two-tone pattern, I could not get any other virtual try-on stuff to divide it in that way. It just became a bluish purple shirt. But in this one, it's got it down the middle exactly how it is with this headshot as the guide. So it absolutely nailed it. Here's just another version of it. I wanted to see if it would do it twice in a row, which it did. On this one, I was using their hug template. I was asking it to do way too much. I mean, it's a gnome on a white background and the guy's in a picture, but given those circumstances and the fact that the gnome just blended into the picture and we've got a hug, I was super impressed with this output too. Here's an example of how prompting can make a difference. Here, I was doing another subject reference. I had this image here of the man in this studio and this little blue guy and it says man dressed as Batman holding a small blue creature in a recording studio and that's what we've got. We do have animation going on in the screens but all I said was that he's holding it in a studio and there's no movement. So I just changed it up a bit to say man dressed as Batman holding and talking to a small blue creature in a recording studio and the blue creature is a little squirmy and wants to get down. And now we've got some more life to the situation. But the way that it holds the integrity of each of these images, I mean, this isn't a version of that background. It's pretty much the background. And this is the same face as in the reference image. And of course, the little blue creature is dead on exactly like that blue creature. And that's just with one reference image. Here's the exact same prompt. I just changed out the man with the gorilla and we get the predictable results. Here's something really cool about subjects referenced. If you look at the pictures here, we've actually got this woman's face, this woman, and this background. So where does she come into play? Well, we're actually focusing in on her necklace. If you look at her necklace here, you'll notice that that is the necklace that Tracy's wearing in this video. When we created this, you'll see that when you're choosing your reference images just by dropping them in here, you can actually select a section within that image. In this case, I chose the necklace. And then the prompt was woman wearing a necklace in a colorful office. That results in this video with her wearing that exact necklace. The other great use for the subject reference is not just to add three different objects or locations, but to give more information about one particular object, or in this case, a face. 
So with our friend Kendra here, who is a Kung Fu instructor, I've got three different images of her face, the one with the necklace we saw before, and just a, another couple of angles. And then the prompt is a close-up of a woman excitedly reading a book about Kung Fu to the panda bear sitting next to her. So again, we didn't have to train a model or anything like that. We just used a few different reference images for angles, and then we've got the look we're going for for the entire video. Same scenario, except that I used a large movement amplitude, and it seems to be just a little bit too much. So just playing with the movement amplitude is going to be important part of the experimental process and just know that there's no one set rule. It just depends on what's going on in your scene. So overall, I continue to be impressed with Vidu and I'm going to continue to keep you up to date on its progress because it's clear that they are intent on becoming a contender. They're improving every aspect of their interface and the output of it. It's worth noting that when you sign up, you get 20 free generations and you have plans that give you anywhere from 800 credits a month to 8,000 credits a month. That's 200 videos up to 2,000 videos, depending on the length. And you're saving 20% if you go with the yearly billing. If these are the types of technologies you like to know about, learn about, explore, and play with, well, why not subscribe to this channel? Because that's what we do here all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...